Hey guys, uh, how's it going? So it's been a little while since I've done a meta report on YouTube, but I figured, you know what, with the seasonal, that's gonna, you guys are gonna be playing in the seasonal tomorrow because, you know, I know a lot of you guys turn to me for uh, advice and high level analysis for things. I get a lot of questions. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of DMs like, Swim, what should I run in the seasonal? I wanted to make this video as a bit of a kind of like meta report talking about what's gonna ladder. The decks that I would generally like be thinking about running in seasonal, I'm not gonna like give an exact lineup for a few reasons, but basically this is gonna serve as a brush up on the meta if you're interested in playing ladder, uh, getting good ladder decks, playing the seasonal, or even just kind of watching the seasonal and kind of knowing about how matchups work, this video is gonna be for you. So as always, this is a tier list of the highest win rate decks in the game. Mostly they end up being my versions, um, but there's a couple that I think there's one or two that I have basically just no disagreements with and I've just put, you know, the like ladder version of the deck here. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on exactly 10 different decks, everything in the tier one and tier two category, uh, which just happens to be 10 decks. And these are decks that I would mostly recommend uh, for both ladder purposes as well as playing in a tournament. Now, tournament format does incentivize some slight tweaks and, you know, some building synergistic lineups. That's a very important element and we'll get into that later. But just for kind of the starter, well, let's do a brief overview on the meta and where things are at. In this video, I'm not going to go through these decks in crazy detail. I'm not going to talk about the card by card choice like I have in past. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be focusing on a deck's matchups, which is something that you guys have requested a lot um, because I don't often talk about decks, good matchups or bad matchups in these, you know, meta update videos. And I should because it's very useful information for you, especially when constructing a tournament lineup. So if you want more specific details about the individual cards, or you want to import the decks, then go to the site swimstream.com i don't profit from the site i just made it for you guys to be able to get decks there's no ads or anything okay so starting from the top we've got fizz tf a very high win rate deck across the boards 56 57 percent and this is my personal version of fizz tf because i haven't found mind meld as amazing in this meta but right now the individual card choices of this deck are slim you can run one mind meld or one zana urchin it's fine overall it's a very powerful deck it does well against a lot of kind of like random or unrefined decks it ends up being unfavored against other types of TF decks, although it's really great versus Lee Sin, and it's favorable versus Anivia. I think a common people have a misconception that Anivia counters TF Fizz, and it pretty much doesn't, because TF Fizz never runs out of steam, and control decks beat decks that try to run out of steam, which Build Water just does not. Next up, uh, the second deck here, this is actually one I'm personally very proud of, because this is the highest winner version of Pirate Burn, and hey, look, it's my version. So, this is a deck that's actually taken the ladder by storm in the last couple of weeks, coming in at also a 57% win rate, tying for the highest. This is a truly phenomenal deck in this current meta. So uh, my version runs three Blade Squire, two Lounging Lizards, and in this case, one Jack the Winner and one Captain Fraun. Blade Squire is really great because when you roll the plus one, uh, or sorry, the plus two damage blade, it's just two free face damage, which is great. And using Overwhelm on something like Jack the Winner is super good as well. But basically this is just the most refined version that just goes for straight face damage. And this one is going to be pretty favorable against almost everything in the meta, actually. It is a bit unfavorable against Fiora Shen and a bit unfavorable against Discard Aggro, but it is even to favorable against literally everything else. Most notably, it stomps all forms of TF quite hard. This is an amazing anti-TF deck, um, including uh, versions like Anivia. I guess TF Go Hard might be favored against this, but it counters Fizz TF and Aphelios TF really, really hard. So with this, I want to kind of point out the big theme here right now of this current meta, which is that aggro is very good, um, which is kind of surprising. It's been a while since we've seen a meta that has had kind of like actual aggro domination like not just one aggro deck that happens to be good but aggro as an archetype across the board being probably the most favorable archetype to play i actually don't know if that's happened before but and we'll talk more later about you know the seasonal and tournament lineups and about how to construct a good tournament lineup um, what I would probably recommend for the seasonal, if you're playing in it tomorrow, I'd probably be bring a fairly aggro skewed lineup. Now I know, like, now that I've said that, a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, if people watching this video are bringing aggro, then I should like big brain and I should play the thing that counters aggro. And I mean, there's definitely some room to try to do an anti-aggro lineup, but it's gonna be extremely vulnerable against too many other things. And the state of aggro right now, if you bring a refined aggro lineup is actually gonna be 
pretty difficult to target like very 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 difficult to target actually uh because you can't really get a three deck lineup that feels amazing against them decks like anivia you guys might have noticed unfavorable against fizz tf unfavorable against pirate burn it's kind of only favorable against discard aggro and that's why you might notice anivia is a lot further down here Anyway, as mentioned, I'll talk about the tournament specifics more later in the video, but for now, moving on to the decks. So, TF Aphelios is a deck that, this win rate's actually very debatable, but it's probably around 54-55%. Um, uh, there's a lot of different versions of this going around. This is my personal version of TF Aphelios, and basically, it is a deck that uh, kind of has taken over Invoke's role in the metagame, almost, right? Like, it's sort of replaced these Mountain Scryer Invoke-style decks as just a kind of a better way of doing the same thing as you can see we've adopted a lot of invokes here with stuff like solar priestess and star shaping and i'm very happy i was right about veil temple being a really low-key card a lot of people were getting on my case early on about that one um so overall tf Aphelios, one of the meta dominant decks right now it is run in the meta mostly because it hard counters tf fizz this is a good way of beating tf fizz it's a great way of beating decks like lee sin but it's pretty vulnerable to aggro now this is somewhat debatable there are certain versions of tf Aphelios that are trying to like bulk against aggro like i said there's a bunch of versions of this but across the board this deck is usually weak to aggro and that's how you beat it Aggro, in this case, kind of more specifically meaning decks like mostly Noxus decks, right? Like, if it has Noxus and it's not like, you know, Ezreal Draven Burn or Ash Midrange, it's Aggro. So that's like Pirate Burn, Overwhelm decks I would consider Aggro in this criteria, and Discard Aggro is Aggro. Fist TF plays a very aggressive style, but mostly it's a bilge deck. That means they're kind of just extremely flexible, and they sacrifice a lot of just like super aggressiveness for the ability to not run out of steam later, which is not what you want when trying to beat. TF Aphelios. Okay, next up, Fralyard Noxus Overwhelm. So this is actually, I think the one version here that I have on my list that's not mine, this is actually a card for card uh, Pushpi's version from the last seasonal. You guys might remember Pushpi if you watched the last seasonal. And uh, I think what a lot of people actually don't realize is this deck has kind of had a high win rate on ladder literally this entire time since the last seasonal this deck has had a kind of like somewhere between tier two arguably at points tier one win rate in ladder and it's really spiking now now that overwhelm is something to really play for again aggro is a good counter to a lot of the meta right now honestly this deck is a little bit of a wild card even though it has good stats it is the stats aren't what i would consider to be in a statistically significant or range uh they're right on the borderline so that's why i haven't been displaying this as a tier one deck for a while however recently off the back of you know aggro decks just being very incentivized in this matter i'm actually very happy recommending this deck for you know the, con the time being including the seasonal format and next up so we're out of tier one and we're into kind of like tier two territory uh, although again keep in mind there's a bit of a spectrum here so the win rate won't be shifting too much these are basically the same level of decks this is my current version of discard aggro uh discard is kind of you can think of it like the most aggro of aggro decks in that it'll beat aggro mirrors typically like discard aggro is a good way to beat other aggro decks like burn but it's kind of the most counterable form of aggro. This is where decks like Anivia, again, Anivia counting aggro is kind of a misconception, but this is the one aggro deck that's so just, it's this deck is only aggro that Anivia does counter it. Uh, decks like, you know, Go Hard TF will counter this, um, but that's what you give up for the ability for this to win typically aggro mirrors which is very powerful overall discard aggro you can think of like the most risky um of the decks i would recommend to bring it is still a good deck there's still nothing wrong with bringing it but compared to the other forms of aggro this one is definitely kind of counterable yeah i mean the other forms of aggro are just like not really counterable um and you know discard aggro can still win any matchup off of a good draw but it does have major weaknesses okay next up we've got scouts now for those of you guys who follow my tier list you might notice something kind of wacky here scouts is listed ahead of fiora shen this is the first time in a very long like what is this fior shen is down in like middle tier two bizarre right uh fior shen actually gets pretty countered by the twisted fate meta whereas scouts can usually go fast enough to actually be kind of favorable against most of the twisted fate decks and that's why uh for the first time in a while fior shen's actually knocks down a a touch and scouts is looking pretty good scouts version hasn't really changed much there's a fairly uh common like cephalopods version for a specific tournament was running like stony suppressor and bannerman which is an alt version and that's fine but this is the one i would recommend for more general play outside of a super specific matchup 
I'm going to talk about Cephalopod's version a little bit later on, actually, because that'll be a really good example of how to think about good tournament lineups and what you're trying to construct. Um, because, you know, I'm not going to just give you guys the lineup, but I'm just going to give you guys all the resources you're going to need to be able to maybe tweak a couple of things and make the lineup that's going to work well for you. So if you're curious about that version of Scouts, stick around. All right. Next up, we've got Burblefish Go Hard. Uh, pretty standard list. Uh, <laughs> this is this is another um, one that I think never really went anywhere. Um, now, there's definitely a lot, a lot less people playing this since um, Go Hard received the nerf, but its win rate has barely dropped since then. Uh, it came off with a higher win rate initially, and it's down to you know what I would consider to be kind of like high tier two. Um, but still a very good list and absolutely a solid choice in this meta right now. You can think of this as one of the more balanced decks. Uh, this is a deck that is favorable against forms of aggro. This is probably probably the best anti-aggro deck in the game right now. Uh, for a lot of you guys who are saying, well, Swim, if Anivia is not good against aggro, what is? Uh, TF Go Hard is probably the best deck against aggro in the game right now off of the stats. Um, because to be able to counter aggro, you still need to have a game plan that doesn't run out of steam and something that's not too much of a commitment, right? Because no matter how confident you are that you're going to be facing aggro, you can't be 100% all in. So this is my personal version of TF go hard and it's got good win rates on the stats but it's still not super popular on ladder and i think a lot of people are worried about the fact that it gets countered by decks like tf aphelios as well as anivia even though it's a good way to counter the third tf um tf fizz basically how you should think about the current meta right now i mean every meta kind of ends up in a very broad rock paper scissors perspective and right now you want to sort it into aggro decks decks that counter aggro decks and decks that get countered by aggro decks right that's an easy way to think about it decks that counter aggro decks are you know stabilizer decks like this one um arguably fiora shen and decks that get countered by aggro decks are going to be some of the more greedy ones tf aphelios maybe the problem with this is this is a good way to think about it but different aggro decks do have different matchup tables and different counters right like discard is different from normal aggro and fizz tf does have like very similar like aggressive style matchups but fizz tf is an example of well aphelios tf does well against fizz tf but aphelios tf doesn't do as well against discard aggro so it depends a little bit on the aggro deck you're thinking about but that's the general way to think about the meta wheel right now so for a tournament lineup you're usually going to want to stack one of the sides of the wheel right so for a tournament lineup not a hundred percent you don't have to you know go all in on a specific point in a triangle or anything like that but you generally want to have a lineup geared towards i'm gonna counter aggro decks or i'm gonna run aggro decks and counter these greedy decks or i'm going to run these greedy decks and counter people just trying to stabilize right there's nothing wrong with just bringing decks that you're very comfortable on and are good value decks like from this tier list. The biggest problem with Fiora Shen right now is normally the reason this deck exists in meta triangles is it is kind of the perfect counter to Freljord SI decks, right? Um, because Deny is a good way to counter Freljord SI in general. Um, usually they run big things like War Mothers or Feel the Rush or Ruination or whatever. Um, but e even bigger than Deny, honestly, is just Demacia. The size and bulk of Demacia units is exactly what you end up wanting against these slower control decks, right? Usually you put enough pressure that Ruination isn't a problem because you can open attack, and your units are big enough that they're not just like dying to whales and stuff. Demacia is a really good natural counter to those kinds of Shadow Isles or those kinds of control decks. And right now, those just kind of aren't in the meta, honestly. Like, Anivia's in the meta a bit, but Anivia is probably the Shadow Wilds deck that is most resilient towards Deny. It's pretty even matchup against Fiora Shen in general, unlike something like War Mothers would be. And yeah, Fiora Shen ends up having a lower win rate in this meta because of that. It's been dethroned after all this time. Still a solid deck. It still comes in ladder with a 53% win rate, a very respectable tier two win rate. And if you're comfortable on this, there's nothing wrong with bringing it. And then we've got uh, a bit of a personal favorite of mine, uh, Endure Aggro. Endure is a, it, it's a bizarre deck. I, I gotta tell you, man, nothing, for those of you guys who don't know anything about Endure stats, like you've seen this deck before, but you don't know what I'm talking about. It's crazy. Endure is a deck that has just defied most kinds of common sense in terms of its ridiculously uh, overperforming meta stats at every step of the way. I'll give you an example. When Gohard got nerfed and Hush saw just like 
three of in like almost every deck in the meta and there's win rate spiked to like 56 57 percent it was like the highest win rate it's ever had um incredibly counterintuitive archetype it seems like it should get completely stomped on by hush and hush isn't necessarily great but the nature of almost all of the targon decks is that they lose to this early aggression onslaught and dirt ends up being a great win condition against cards like tf that can't that can handle the early aggression and it really balances out this deck perfectly because anything that gets count anything that counts as in dirt gets hard countered by this just early aggro and anything that counts as this early aggro gets hard countered by endure uh pretty much now i gotta say and there's a bit of a sleeper pick uh it's a little bit lower on this list i really wouldn't sweat it uh you guys might be like well swim it's a little low on this list it's number nine out of the 10 decks right and these are kind of in order right swim uh they are a, like in a general order but for the most part these are all decks that i would recommend if you can fit it into your lineup and maybe if it's a kind of deck you're comfortable playing i'd recommend it the, these decks all have like very minor differentials of win rates between them and it comes a lot more down to comfort and lineups rather than just like over focusing on these like one or two percent win rate differences i would say similar to discard aggro and dur is a deck that usually does well against aggro mirrors it's kind of like an aggro deck that races down other forms of aggro um i can't be too sure we don't have amazing stats on endure for like you know much statistical certainty but this is a very low-key pick i think if i was playing in this tournament i would actually i would very much consider bringing this deck in my lineup no joke and then the very last deck here is lee zoe combo now a lot of people might have been wondering what happened to lee sin as a deck it still sees a decent amount of play on ladder but its win rate has plummeted it gets pretty countered by tf in general it gets countered by fizz tf it gets countered by aphelios tf even um it just doesn't do as well into this meta environment since tf has completely taken over and it doesn't even necessarily do well against some of the super aggressive versions like discard aggro uh that can usually barrel you down without a response and that's why i've lowered it to this point on the list it's still something that if you are a good player if this is a comfort deck to you it is a popular deck among high level players there's nothing really wrong with bringing this deck but i don't think that unless you have a specific reason for it you should feel compelled to bring this deck so where does that leave those of you guys that want to play in this tournament? Well, if you don't want to try hard too much, uh, you know, just filling in random slots from this tier list is going to do very well for you. Like if you're not sure what version of a deck to bring, or if you're not sure, you know, what your third deck is going to be, choosing something good here that you're at least relatively comfortable with will do very well for you. Uh, I would really recommend not deviating from your comfort level that much. Uh, getting outside of your comfort zone is a really important way to learn and get better as a player. But when we're talking about like optimizing for tournaments, it's a very, very common mistake people make. They'll go for like the theoretically best option and it'll be a deck that they're less comfortable on and it'll just be worse for them. So really, I got to say, you know, if you are not sure, I would really recommend sticking to the decks you're more comfortable with rather than playing these right uh you can play versions of these like these are refined versions of archetypes but you know if, if you for example play a lot of uh scouts or discard aggro you can load up these versions that's fine but don't go out of your way being like oh swim said this is a tier one deck i'm gonna play i don't really normally play aggro but let's load up pirate burn and hope it works out right because if you're you know if you have the aggro mentality it'll do extremely well for you but if you don't don't get pressured okay so now <clears throat> we're gonna talk about the the lineup construction identity of a tournament um this is kind of the point where you know some of you guys who are interested in this tournament or future tournaments this is going to be very helpful for you but we're kind of like past the point um that just like strictly ladder play will be interested in okay so how to construct a lineup for a tournament because i've alluded to this several times it is a categorically different strategy than the idea of like what decks that are good on ladder and that's important to understand i mean if you just pick three good ladder decks it'll take you pretty far but if you're really maximizing your odds your decks need to have very specific synergies with each other which sounds weird right because why would a deck have synergy i mean it's still one-on-one -on -one, right my decks aren't playing at the same time so why does it matter um well it matters for two different reasons one is that this seasonal tournament format includes a ban which means you can pick decks that are normally weak to the one singular thing and then ban that thing right and that allows you to kind of like cover multiple decks's weak points at once right so you want to make sure your lineup has multiple decks that benefit from a singular ban 
usually. There's nothing wrong with going for a flexible band either. Rule number two, and this one is actually just kind of like an interesting mathematical concept. This is conquest. Conquest means when you win with a deck, it's out. And when you lose with a deck, you have to play it again. That means it is a fundamentally weakest link format. Uh, we have this notion of uh, something we call targeting, which is this idea of building a lineup around trying to beat a specific kind of deck or archetype and hoping the opponent is going to bring that deck or archetype so that your lineup makes sense. Um, normally, this is uh, a strategy. Uh, targeting is something that I think a lot of people think is like an all-in thing, like you're either targeting or you're not. And I can tell you that's not true. That's complete nonsense. Um, in reality, don't think about it like it's an all-in thing. Every good tournament lineup should be targeting, period, to a degree. Because what happens is in Conquest, when you win with one of your decks and it's out your opponent has to play their deck again which means you get a mathematical edge you know you're you're incrementing your win rate to win the overall matchup if the deck you just beat has a similar positive win rate matchup table to the deck that you're loading into the same deck they just lost with okay that all makes sense and that means it's not about targeting necessarily but it's about making to rule number two is try to make it so that the decks you bring have similar positive matchup tables with each other relative to things that you think that the opponent is going to bring this doesn't mean all three decks have to be like 60 percent they can all be 55s across the board this doesn't mean that it even needs to be all three of your decks it can oftentimes be like two out of three but what this means is when picking decks together you do want them to be relatively similar in terms of their positive matchups so those are the two rules rule number one Use something that kind of like uh, allows the band to cover your weaknesses and rule number two You want to kind of like stack your strengths so that you have this idea of Okay, when I win I'm then going to snowball my lineup and Cue another winning deck, right? And this is why in general your decks wants to they don't necessarily have to conform in the terms of archetypes it doesn't need to be like oh i brought one aggro deck so i should bring two and three aggro decks that's not necessarily true there's plenty of exceptions to that but they do want to somewhat conform in terms of matchups which often archetypes can do that's just like one way that can happen and there's another thing as well which is that when you're doing this well when you're targeting um you don't have to just target a single deck good lineups and this is something that's like very, very common. And I do this in almost every, every, I think actually every tournament I've played in, in Legends of Runeterra, I've done different degrees of dual targeting. Um, I think if you're really sweating, if you're tryharding <laughs> and you really want to win tournaments, you should be doubling down on your effective positive matchup spreads. Um, so you look at a matchup field, you look at common decks and you're like, okay, A deck and B deck. I'm going to dual target these decks and my lineup is going to be kind of either 55 to 60% across the board against both of those two decks with my three decks. So that's six matchup tables that are all kind of in the 50 to 60% range that you have to uh, basically have in one specific lineup, right? It sounds kind of tricky, um, but again, it doesn't, they don't even all have to be favorable. It's fine if some of them are like 50%. That's totally fine. As long as they kind of conform to the same general area of favorability so i'm going to give you guys an example and this is what i was talking about earlier cephalopod recently won uh one of the fight nights i think uh th this was the one last week yeah one week ago i think and he did it with that version of scouts that i mentioned so this is the deck i was referring to the stony suppressor version that he built uh specifically for this fight night it was a good lineup and i think that it's it's a really good logic here and i'm going to use this as an example of how to construct a tournament lineup so fight night doesn't have a ban it's just two decks, um, but you still want to be targeting. You still want to be making sure your matchup tables conform positively to each other, right? So Cephalopod brought this deck with Stony Suppressor Scouts with Bannerman, and his second deck was just a it's kind of like a different version of Overwhelm, right? It's different from the version I linked on my site. This is not Pushpi's version. This is kind of his own tweak of it, but it's the same archetype, right? It's Draven, it, or it's uh, Noxus Freljord Overwhelm, right? And it's going to generate most of the same tables because of it. And what he did was he looked at this tournament, and he said, okay, the meta call here is that I expect a lot of people to bring Fizz TF, and I expect a lot of people to bring Lee Sin, Zoe, okay? So what two decks can I bring 
that are both favorable against both of those decks. So all four of those matchups. Deck A versus Lee Sin Zoe, Deck B versus Lee Sin Zoe, and Deck A versus Fizz TF, and Deck B versus Fizz TF. And he came, you know, those four solutions uh, basically coincide in uh, decks that look like this, right? Because the Stony Suppressor is kind of like a unique counter that happens to hit both of those decks. Stony Suppressor is a great counter against Lee Sin. It's a great counter against Fizz TF. And we've got Overwhelm, which happens. Overwhelm is a very underrated archetype, as you guys might notice by the fact that I'm listing it as tier one on my site, even though a lot of people aren't playing Overwhelm. And Overwhelm is another archetype that does well against both of those. So this is how we have to be thinking about the tournament lineup construction. And like I said, I, I want... I don't want to give you guys the full puzzle, you know, I don't want to give you guys the full picture, I don't want to tell you guys exactly what lineup to bring, there would be a few problems with that, um, like I said, I mean, first of all, at a certain point, it's arguable that you, people might be like, well, Swim made a video about this, and there will be, like, maybe a hundred people out of the thousand bringing this lineup, so I should counter it. I, I'm not really worried about that personally, um, because usually any lineup I'd recommend would be pretty resilient towards that, but... It's a minor factor, and for the most part, it just comes down to me giving you guys the tools that you need to be able to kind of like put these decks together, put these ideas together. It doesn't have to be like super creative, but just making sure your decks are working well with each other. Now, let me give you guys some examples of that uh, from my own tier list. So, uh, a, a, again, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but a decent example, like, you know, just something that immediately is apparent to me, something I would consider is a lineup like, uh, okay, so FizzTF. Pirate Burn and maybe Endure Aggro or something like that. Um, these three are basically aggro decks. I know I, I specified earlier Fizz TF is kind of not really an aggro deck. It's aggro skewing. It's it's a lot. Of, it's doing a lot of things at once, and it does have an aggro game plan for sure. Um, and it does have overlap in those positive tables because of that. So, you know, that lineup uh, is perfectly legal because it's champ lock, not region lock. So we can bring bilge water twice as long as they're not overlapping champions and these ones aren't. So Fizz TF, Pirate Burn, and Endure Aggro. These decks, you know, are losing to some of the same decks, right? For example, Burblefish Go Hard counters all three of these decks. Um, I think Burblefish Go Hard is a pretty decent pick to this tournament, uh, by the way, even though I expect it's not going to be super popular. And what that means is we can ban it, and that's fine. There's not really a lot of different ways to counter all three of these decks, so our ban is a good protection against that. And by choosing three decks that are aggressive in this way, we do very well against the, the general field of things we expect the opponent to bring, right? Like, if the opponent is bringing something like... I mean, it, it depends on the versions, but there's a lot of forms of TFL Felios that lose to aggro specifically, like even ones that are 50-50 against Fizz TF. Um, we're doing pretty well in some of the mirrors. Like, for example, uh, we'll be fine in mirrors like Overwhelm. Uh, Endure will have a bit of an edge against. Um, so that one's pretty close. And we're completely protected against people running like weird counter strategies because if you don't bring discard then decks that normally try to counter aggro don't really counter you right again nothing really wrong with bringing discard it's just a random example so that's a, a decent example of a lineup now what you're going to want to do further from that is you kind of want to individually tweak you don't have to change much just a couple of cards be like okay so if we're banning this then I might not need that anymore, right? Like, for example, there was a while where people were running Academy Prodigy. Um, Academy Prodigy. Sorry, not Academy Prodigy. <laughs> I got that confused. Astute, people were running Astute Academic in Discard Aggro because of Gohard TF. And you can be like, well, okay, my Discard Aggro, I normally run Astute Academic, but because we're banning Gohard TF, I can run Legion Saboteur instead or whatever, right? Uh, so you do want to tailor the decks a little bit towards any sort of, you know, if you're planning a specific ban, and uh, towards what you're trying to beat as well, you know, make them a little bit more geared towards what they do. So they can have kind of like more of a singular cohesive mind and really work together at just like pummeling those decks. And that do very well for you i mean it's really there's a large complexity in terms of the different ways to do this you know there's so many different ways to maximize but at its core the fundamentals are 
pretty simple. It really just comes down to following those kind of two rules that I mentioned before, making sure that your decks are all hiding from one ban and making sure your decks have some kind of similar positive overlap in matchup tables. So I would really recommend start with what you're comfortable on. Start with what you know. Don't start from scratch. Don't be like, okay, if I don't start from the counter, you know, don't be like, okay, if I want to counter uh, Fizz TF, what three decks should I choose? No, start with what you're comfortable on. Whatever deck you're best at, or you like, if you think it's a tier one deck or it's an archetype you're comfortable on, lock that in immediately. Just say, okay, I'm going to bring this deck. Um, and then build around that. Be like, okay, what positive matchups does it have that I can maybe double down on with the rest of my lineup? Or what what am I banning that might lead myself to pick these other two decks, right? And of course, I mean, if you're really min-maxing, you will sometimes have to get away from the deck you're most comfortable on. But for most of you guys, I would definitely recommend just building around what you know and starting with that. And using that as the basis for planning out the rest of your lineup as a whole, what decks you want to try to counter, what decks you want to try to, you know, avoid losing to. And that's it. That is kind of like a wrap up of a the general meta right now for those of you guys who have been kind of like, you know, wondering where things are at. Um, it's actually changed quite a bit since I last did one of these, which was a while ago. Um, yeah, there's uh, there, there, there's been quite a few shifts. Very, very aggressive leaning metagame. And I'm really looking forward to uh, watching some of your guys' games during this seasonal. It's going to be a lot of fun and good luck to all of you guys who are playing in it. Hopefully, even if you're not planning on playing in it, kind of like watching this video and understanding the context of like, you know, favorable matchup versus unfavorable matchups. I really think it's it's really helpful to know, you know, the purposes of bringing this. Like I'm bringing this because I'm trying to beat that or I'm bringing this, but I'm a bit weak to that. You know, it's all understanding the meta just comes from understanding the different matchups and what's favored against what. So hopefully you guys will have been able to learn at least a little bit from that. But that is it for my meta report uh seasonal tournament two edition and i'm uh, really looking forward to watching this tournament alongside you guys it's gonna be a lot of fun all right guys i'll see you guys next time